This program comes to you by electrical transcription. The Treasury Star Parade. With Lieutenant Robert Montgomery, United States Navy, Ella Logan, Carmen Miranda, Al Goodman and his orchestra and chorus, and Olson and Johnson. Our slogan, Millions for Defense. Robert Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen, in another of the new series of programs brought to you by the Treasury Department. Once again, our studio has been taken over by the stars of that famous Broadway musical comedy, Sons of Fun. That Scotch lovely, Ella Logan, the Brazilian bombshell, Carmen Miranda, and those two screws on the loose. This is Olsen. <laughs> this is Johnson. And now, come on, tell me, what, what are you laughing about now? What the mama cannonball said to the papa cannonball. Well, what did she say? I think we're going to have a little BB. <laughs> Which gives you just a small idea. But the singing is good anyway. Ella Logan to start us off with an old favorite. And how she sings it. Step it up, Ella. <laughs> would say. Say, Lieutenant, you're looking awful healthy today. Been out on a boat lately? Yes, I was out in one of those mosquito boats today, and boy, those babies really can travel. Yeah, I can imagine. Have you ever done any sailing, Mr. Johnson? In a manner of speaking? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you prefer? A Marconi rigged sloop, a three-masted frigate, or a centerboard yawl? I wouldn't know. <laughs> All I've ever sailed is rubber ducks. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. Chick, he's talking about real navigation. Have you ever come in contact with the United States Navy? Have I? What? He what? said, have you ever come in contact with the United States Navy? What? Three times. Three times? Well, what happened? I lost three girls. You know, Lieutenant, there's one thing about the Navy that's always baffled me. What's that? Uh, how do you tell the time on a ship with those bells? Oh, it's not very hard. Six bells is three o'clock, eight bells is four o'clock, and so forth. Well, what does it mean when you hear 16 bells? <laughs> the good humor man is aboard. <laughs> no, no, don't pay any attention to him, Lieutenant. I'm serious. Well, there's no such thing as 16 bells. 12.30 a.m. is one bell. One o'clock is two all the way up to eight, which is four. Then 4.30, you go back to one bell all the way up to eight, which is eight. Then 8.30 is one up to 12, which is eight. Then back to 12.30, which is one again. So forth. Very simple. Yeah. But, but how do you tell what time it is? <laughs> 
you silly. You just look at your watch. Uh, uh, you will forgive us for being so noisy, Lieutenant. Uh, uh... Certainly, sir. It's a great pleasure having you with us tonight. By the way, did you get a kick out of it when you got your special invitation from the Treasury Department to appear on this program? I certainly did. How about you, Mr. Johnson? Did you get much of a thrill when you got that big letter marked Government Official Business? Thrill? I didn't open it for three days. <laughs> Why? What was wrong? I thought it was from my local draft board. <laughs> You've had a lot of worthy predecessors on the Treasury program. All great radio teams, too. Burns and Allen, Abbott and Costello, Baby Snooks and Daddy, Amos and Andy. Really? Yeah, and it's all for Defense and Morgenthau. What program are they on? <laughs> what program are they on? He's talking about Morgenthau, the Secretary of the Treasury. Don't tell me you never heard of Henry Morgenthau. Oh, Hank. Sure I've heard of him. Well, Mr. Morgenthau is handling the stamps and bond campaign. Oh. He's behind defense. Who's he hiding from? <laughs> oh, no, it's no use trying to explain anything to you about bonds. You just buy them. Say, hey, looky there. Isn't that Carmen Miranda over there? Yeah, I'll see you later. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? What? Where are you going? <laughs> to improve relations between North and South America. <laughs> Hey, come on, come on back here. Oh, Miranda! Oh, boa tarde, boa tarde. Como vão todos bem? Eu vou todos bem. Obrigadinho, boa tarde. Just watch me, watch me do my stuff. Wait a minute. Carmen. Yeah? Uh, how about stepping out with me tonight, huh? You are not my type. Scram. <laughs> Hey, listen, wait, come here. You don't know how to handle these things. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be gallant. You have to be romantic. Because after all, you know, Miranda comes from South America. And don't forget I'm a good neighbor. Good. <laughs> now watch me. Here's the way. You, you want me to watch you? You, you watch me. I'm going to take good notes to you. What you're going to do. You watch me. All right. Uh, Miranda. Ah, yes. Miranda, how would yeah. you like to go to the Savoy Plaza tonight with me? Savoy mm, Plaza? Yeah. Softy music? Yeah. Roman? Yeah. Tete tete? Yeah, yeah. Arquite? Yeah. Champagne? Yeah. Champagne? Yeah. Ha <laughs> sucker! <laughs> This is the part of our program we usually reserve for the average American. Today, we've turned it over to a lowly dime, Mrs. Murgatory's dime, as characterized by John Matouche and as portrayed by Lieutenant Robert Montgomery. I am nobody you'd remember. You've seen me and them like me all over the place, but never noticed this particularly. I'm a dime. No ordinary dime, see? Most dimes don't rate much respect around. Good for a tip or a cup of coffee or sinkers or, or a shoe shine. Or they're the thin dimes a lot of people ain't worth. Uh-uh. Not me. I'm a kind of special dime. What's my name? Well, my official moniker is E. Pluribus Unum. But that's not what I call myself. I'm Mrs. Murgatroyd's dime. Who's Mrs. Murgatroyd? Say, don't rush me. Don't rush me. I'll keep talking. When I first got out of the mint, I was just a kid. You know, shiny and new, ready for anything. I'm all excited the day I first entered civilian life, and so bang, just like that, I'm dropped in the kid's piggy bank. I stayed there six months, nearly went stir-crazy. Then one night, the kid's old man broke, breaks open the bank and goes on a spree. I bought a bug, mug of beer over on 3rd Avenue. After that, everything gets a little hazy. I move so fast. I was on a bus, 5th Avenue. I bought a can of beans for a housewife. Took a fella to an early bird matinee. Yep, I even got religion. I was dropped into a collection basket by a millionaire. Gee, I was glad he let go of me, too. He'd have pinched me black and blue. Then I was all over the place. Bought a loaf of bread, got a girl a lipstick at the five and ten. You'd be surprised what a dime can do. The five and ten was nice. Saw a lot of the fellas there. We jawed about what was going on. One of the 1930 dimes kept complaining about the country going to the dogs. Kept speechifying about disaster. He turned out to be a phony anyway. Then they threw me in for change. Gee, what a hot hand I landed into. The dame was in a hurry. She drops me in the street. Didn't even look back. I lays there. Nobody cares. E pluribus, I says to myself, you've fallen low. And I had to fight to keep from busting out crying like a common penny. But then, then it was Mrs. Murgatroyd clapped eyes on me. Uh-oh, she says. And I see by her face she's glad to see me. It's tough being in a big city and nobody caring. You don't know how tough it is being a dime. What's a greenback got I ain't got? Just a better start in life, that's all. Unfair. But Mrs. Murgatroyd scoops me up, pops me in her pocket, and off she goes home. You never heard of Mrs. Murgatroyd? 
Well, she's a scrub woman in one of them big cheesecake skyscrapers. Works hard, scrubbing while you sleep. Well, I hang around Mrs. Murgatroyd. I get to know her. Poor and proud. Nice old lady. I get real attached to her. Now, this is the payoff. Swinging along in her purse, I hear people talking about the war. And I hear her friends chinning about the fence stamps and bonds. Patriotic, you know. I didn't pay much attention. You get cynical hanging around in cash registers. Anyway, I know Mrs. Murgatroyd don't quite live off what she makes. Still, the talk goes on, and you can imagine my surprise when one day I find myself and the old lady standing in one of the stations, watching them go up to the window. They're buying stamps. One, two, five, and ten dollars. Oh, no, I try to tell her. Let's get home, lady. We're in fancy company. But she stands there, and then all of a sudden, she straightens up her battered hat and sidles up to the window. Once there was a widow, and a widow's might, she whispers to herself. And then she says aloud, one stamp, one ten-cent stamp. Here's my dime. As I leave the old lady's hand, I feel sort of funny. Her dime. That's me. I belong to somebody. No matter what happens to you, Mrs. Murgatroyd, I says, I won't forget you. And a lot happened. Me and the other defense dimes went down to Washington and waited till there was enough of, us to, enough of us to pay for a torpedo. And you know what? Somehow I wasn't a dime anymore. I was the torpedo. Sure, I know what a torpedo costs, about $12,000. But it was me and all the dimes from all the Mrs. Murgatroyds around. We was in that torpedo. Well, I was shipped into a submarine chamber and left in the dark. I could feel I was riding under the sea, and I'd begun to tingle all over. Here was I, Mrs. Murgatroyd's dime, now the tip of a big torpedo. I felt proud. No, my rise in the world didn't go to my head. I was there on the tip of the torpedo, concentrating on what I have to do. Then there was a lot of noise, and the next thing I know, I'm in the barrel of a gun, and I see a big ship coming, spitting flame at me. I got mad, and I took a deep breath. Any minute now, I says, and I starts counting. One, two, three. I go speeding through the green waves, cutting foam up on every side, me leading all the other dimes. A big silver fish slicing up the water. The boat gets closer and closer. I'm heading for the magazine, I think, and there she is ahead. Quick, now. <laughs> I sank her, and I sank with her. Me? Me. Mrs. Murgatroyd's dime, sinking a destroyer. Well, what do you know? I wonder what the old lady would think of me now. Mrs. Murgatroyd's dime is your dime. Everybody's dime. No amount is too small. It may not seem much by itself, but when all your nickels and dimes and quarters and dollars are put together, they make millions for defense. They keep a steady stream of torpedoes, ships, planes, and bombs flowing toward our battle lines, supplies which are essential to our victory. Invest your money in that victory. Invest it in United States defense bonds and stamps. Budget a part of your income every week. Sign up for the Treasury payroll plan. And remember, every dollar you invest in United States defense stamps and bonds is a dollar which you invest in your own future and the future of your country. The United States Treasury Department thanks the distinguished artists who gave their talents to this performance. Lieutenant Robert Montgomery, United States Navy, who acted as our master of ceremonies, Olson and Johnson, Ella Logan, and Carmen Miranda. Orchestra and chorus were under the direction of Al Goodman. Writing by Hal Block, John Latouche, and Malcolm Meacham. Production by William A. Bacher. This is Larry Elliott speaking. Thank <laughs> you.